Our Father, we come now with our heads bowed in humble submission to your will and to your word. We thank you for the unction of the Holy Spirit that gives us fresh anointing to even tried and true scripture. We ask that you bless your word, your will, and your way. I ask that you forgive me of my sins, that you might use me again, and that you place in my heart the purpose for this place, that we might be obedient to your word, that we might share and care and undertake mission in a way that folks understand that we represent the love of God. God is so great, Jehovah. Bless us. Bless families that are grieving now. Loss of a brother, loss of a friend, for whatever our loss may be. Bless those that are suffering through sickness and illness and trauma and tragedy, that they may find that our hope is in you and is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We thank you for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the joy of our salvation. We thank you for all that you've brought to our hands, that you allowed us to use in this world to help us to always be mindful that we're preparing for a better place. Bless now as only you can. Guide us and hold us and hide us and keep us in your care. I ask in the name of him who died for us, but refused to stay dead. It is in the name of Christ that I pray. And all believers said amen. 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 <clears throat> Those of you that have your Bible or have access to a Bible, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Job, the second chapter. And for the conservation of time, I'll read the ninth and tenth verses. And, and I know that you want to beat everybody else to the restaurant this evening, so if you push, <laughs> if you push, I'll pull. Right. <laughs> Job chapter two, beginning at verse nine, it says. Then said his wife unto him, Do it, thou still retain thy integrity, curse God, and die. Yeah. But Job said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. God bless his word and his people. Yeah. I want to tag this text. She was not all wrong. She was not all wrong. Mm -hmm. I want to suggest that we take a second look at Miss Job and her situation. Nothing shakes up a family the way trouble does, especially when it comes all out of nowhere. All right, all right. Nothing sh Why, when people began to go through various trials and tribulations. Uh, I've heard them say or even pray for the patience of Job. Mm -hmm. Let me caution you, when you ask for the patience of Job, in order to have the patience of Job, you must also have the tribulations of Job. Yeah, right. Unexpected trauma touches everyone in the house, on the job and in the church. The community, whether it be local, state, or national at large. We are jolted by the shock of unexpected tragedy. Yes. It is not that we are not faced tragedy before, but it's different when it seems to be no warning, no apparent reason, a plausible explanation. Some of us mm -hmm. 
have been taught some stuff that's not necessarily biblical. We believe that God uses tragedy as a form of punishment, thinking that we must have done something to deserve whatever we're going through or whatever difficulty we're facing. Uh, this is the tr There's another train of thought that God is trying to tell us something by allowing some trepidation of su suffering. We embrace the ideology of our elders who taught us that you don't question God. No, you don't. All right. All right. Over the years, all of our preaching and teaching on Job has convinced us that Job's know how to suffer. He handled it like a trooper. Yes, sir. Thus leads us to the statement of the text. A critical reading of the text revealed that Job wasn't the only one suffering. Uh -huh. Miss Job is suffering as well. Mm -hmm. Since this is plain to see, why does the plight of Miss Job go completely ignored by most of us mm -hmm. who claim to be exegetical in our treatment of the text and approach to expositorial preaching? Mm. Why is that? We do not think of Miss Job when we need an example of suffering. Why do we seem to minimize the pain of Miss Job? Why is her perspective narrowly or never included in the telling of Job's dilemma? All right. This Mother's Day, I sought not a role model, but a real model. When we spiritualize everything, we fail to realize that suffering is as much human, as as much a human experience as it is a spiritual experience. Yeah. Out of the 42 chapters, the 1,347 verses found in the book of Job, only one verse deal with Miss Job <laughs> as she expressed her attitude mm -hmm. during her suffering. It is because, is it because her comments are too raw and too real? I raise the question because people handle crisis differently. No two people are exactly the same. That does not mean that one person has to be right and another person has to be wrong. It means that we handle it different. Mm -hmm. We see it different. Mm -hmm. We understand differently. Mm -hmm. And some of us speak before we think. Right. Or think before we speak and think we're saying what we need to say. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's look at this text with a new possibility. And in so doing, we can hopefully have a better appreciation for the perspective of our other brothers and sisters who thinks differently on their journey. The first thing I want you to notice is the obvious spiritual connectedness between what is happening on earth with Job and what is happening in heaven between God and the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Won't take the time to retell the story. It's been told over and over. Uh, but Satan got permission mm -hmm. to deal with Job. Yes, and unbeknowing to both Job and Miss Job, something is going on in heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, it was as you look at and read the first chapter of the book of Job, this man from earth, it was the best days in the life of Job. And then suddenly it became the worst days in Job's life. Mm -hmm. Job is stripped of his children, mm -hmm. his chatter, his cattle, mm -hmm. and his comfort. Within moments, the Job family was turned completely upside down. Yeah. One day, out of what contextually appears to be nowhere, 
Miss Jones approaches her husband, according to chapter 2, verse 9, and says to him, as she looked at him in what she most likely considered a pathetic case, mm -hmm. and asked him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Theologians, both conservative and liberal, have some harsh things to say about Miss Job. Yeah. But before we rush to judgment, I believe Miss Job has the right to speak her heart. Have you considered the fact that Miss Job was traumatized by the entire deal? Do you realize that Miss Job had to make major adjustments in her life as well? After all, she had lost economic stability as well. Miss Job had been reduced from the leading lady of Ur to one of the poorest women in town. Right. It was Miss Job who had gone from riding in a chauffeur driven chariot to walking wherever she went. Mm -hmm. It was Miss Job also who lost 10 children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She is the one who spent 90 months of her life pregnant. <clears throat> a minimum of 30 hours in labor. She is the one who changed diapers, nursed the baby, mm -hmm. taught them to walk and talk. It was Miss Job uh -huh. who groomed her seven sons to be good husbands yeah. and prepared her daughters to be good wives and mothers. It was Miss Job who had also had her hopes and dreams of becoming a grandmother dash when she received word that all of her children were dead. Yeah. It was Miss Job who also made one trip to the cemetery and said goodbye 10 times. Well, all right, all right. And when she thought that she could at least be able to grieve her massive loss in the security and comfort of her husband's arms, she now finds herself permeated to the death of other despair. Mm -hmm. As she witnessed her only source of earthly security, support, and significance become emancipated in terminal illness. Right. And I submit to you that perhaps after going through all that she had gone through, Miss Job was not all wrong. All right. All right. She too was hurt, broken, abandoned, grieved. Mm -hmm. She too also laid awake at night wondering what the next day was going to bring, yeah. whether or not her husband would live through another day. She hadn't signed up for all this. Perhaps Miss Joe wasn't wrong. Perhaps she was not wrong when she told her husband to curse God and die. Mm -hmm. For somewhere I believe in her soul, she believed that the only thing keeping her husband alive was his indominant spirit of faith and trust. And perhaps in her eyes, the only way to end his suffering was to curse God and get it over with. Yeah. I know that seems cruel and uncompassionate, but I wonder, have any of you stood by the bedside of a loved one or a personal friend who is suffering from a debilitating disease, hooked up to all kinds of tools and machines to the point that you know the only thing keeping them alive is the artificial support. Mm. And you know what it is to pray to tell God, if you're not going to heal them, then take them. Yes, Miss Job sound abrasive and bitter. But if you just take the time to read the text and the 10 or 20 chapters after it, even though Job did not curse God, he spent many of his days cursing the day that he was born, wow. wishing he was dead. And maybe Miss Job wasn't wrong. Maybe she was human and not spiritual. Or better yet, she wasn't religious a hypocritical. Well, right. Miss Joe's statement is that she simply said what she was feeling. 
Anybody know anybody like that? If we've learned anything about your wife or your girlfriend, it is that they say what's on their mind. They say what they got to. Y'all might have quiet. How many of you brag about I say what I want to say? I do what I want to do. What come up? Miss Joe was just being a woman. She was just being human. She was hurt. She was devastated, and she was watching her husband uh, not in a position and condition that he could respond in the way that he's been responding or take care of her the way that he's been taking care of her. And she said what she said what she felt. Amen. Women, brethren, are more forthright in speaking whatever is on their mind. If they don't like something, they say it. If they feel mistreated, they tell you. If they think your friends are bogus, they say it. They tell us, you better watch that one. <laughs> and we act like we don't agree with them. Then we spend the next few days watching that one or this one. <laughs> Ms. Job simply stated how she felt. And what was on her mind? I don't believe Miss Job was all wrong. While we're celebrating the man of God, Job, who God has almost placed on the pedestal and certainly in a place of position, we, in the midst of all of his storms, was Miss Job. She was there when. The news came. She was there through all of the hurt and pain. Wives are often treated like Miss Job in the eyesight of men and other men because it's easier to embrace the perspective of Job, but hers was more real than people care to embrace. Miss Job could not take her grief, could not take her sadness, was overtaken by her husband's sickness, and could not fake a strong confidence in God that had seemingly let her down. The truth is, she heard it also. She bled also. She needed prayer and encouragement also. Nothing is mentioned about her friends showing up to say anything. How many of you know that each of us needs something when we're suffering? Right. And when we're suffering from the inside, all of us at some point in time feel like giving up. All right. But I don't believe that Job was all wrong either. For Job responds to her, you speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? You see, it's not that Job didn't understand how Miss Job felt. It was he who had the wealth, the status, the reputation, and the respect. It was he who really acted like the priest of his household and prayed daily for his children just in case they sinned against God while parting. Uh -huh. It was Job who had lost his possessions, his wealth, his children, uh -huh. and now his health. It was Job who had to face the reality of his posterity was cut off, and there were no sons to perpetuate his name. If anybody understand what it feels like, to plunge into the depth of despair, distraught, depression, and discouragement, surely Job knew. Mm -hmm. He had his moments when he journeyed through the valley of sorrow, cursed the day when he was born, the moment when he expressed his frustration toward life, God, friends, moments when he bothered between, back and forth between self-pity and self-righteousness, 
moments when he accused God of being angry with him, tormenting him, breaking him into pieces, moment when he demanded an audience with God. He was drawn into his own self-inflicted pity party. He allowed friends to anger his soul. He's disillusioned, disenchanted, disheartened. But in all of this, Job does not curse God. But he knew some stuff. He said it himself. Job 19, 25, and 27, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he was standing upon the roof. And after my skin has thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, mm-hmm. whom I shall see for myself, right. and my eyes shall behold and not another. Mm. Naked I came out of my mother's womb, uh-huh. and naked shall I return. Right. It was Job who said, the Lord giveth, yeah. and the Lord has taken away. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job says, I know not where God is. But if he is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, immutable, then I am confident that he knows where I am and what I can take. And when he has tried me, I will come forth like pure gold. May I say that in our troubled times and utter despair, we've got to know some other stuff. When life shifts on us, we've got to know some other stuff. When we hit the bottom of life and we kick that bottom out and find another bottom, we got to know some other stuff. you got to know some stuff when your situation turned to dung. And you got to know some stuff when you don't have a shout and you don't have a ready praise. you got to know some stuff. Miss Joe, for the most part, knew that God had been good to them. God had blessed them. They had worshipped him, praised him. Shall we only love God as long as the children are fine? As long as we can glorify him and we're wealthy and prosperous? So Job's response was, if I curse God now, that simply means that I only praise him as long as I'm styling and profiling. I can only praise him as long as there's money in my pocket. Shall I only praise him as long as my children are well and doing good in school, top of the class? Can I only praise him as long as my marriage is strong and my job is stable? Can I only praise him as long as people like me and everybody are saying positive things about me? But the minute life shifts on me, the minute tragic strike, Uh am I going to stop praising him? Mm. Am I going to stop worshiping him? Am I going to stop giving God glory? And so he says, "Uh, you sound like a foolish woman. And Job went all wrong either. But Miss Job went all wrong. Miss Job went all wrong for feeling the way she did. And neither was Job wrong for responding the way he did. But more importantly, God wasn't wrong. You, re- you must remember that this whole idea started because God said something. Because the Bible tells us God was having a meeting in heaven. When the sons of God and angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan was in the midst. When Satan came to give his report, the Lord said, where have you been? Mm-hmm. Satan replied, from going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down on it. Yeah. Then the Lord said, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you noticed that there is none like him on the earth? For he is blameless and upright. He fears God and turns away from evil. Satan then accused Job of being faithful only because of his stuff. Uh, He said, you put a hedge around him. You got him hedged in and he got enough sense not to come out. 
he, he got enough sense not to play with me or to listen to me. But, but I tell you, if you will allow me to put my finger and touch his stuff, All right. he'll crush you to your face. Yeah. God gave him permission. <laughs> God gave him permission again to touch his body, but not his soul. This is one of the most, le- this is the most difficult lesson for this generation of believers to grasp. That somewhere in the sovereignty of God's will, God allows things to happen that we should not choose and would never have chosen for ourselves. I believe I'm standing on biblical ground. But I suggest to you that before God allows things to happen the way they did, there has to be a conversation about you, about you, Nathan, in heaven, about you, Miss Spencer, in heaven. That there has to already have been a conversation about you. God knows how much we can bear. Somebody in the room today is dealing with some terrible stuff. You're saved, you're satisfied, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's evident by a burning fire in you. You witness to the words, you show up faithfully. Mm -hmm. And everywhere you turn, there's some stuff over here and some stuff over there. Paul says we're troubled on every side. We're perplexed, we're persecuted, and we are cast down. It seems as if you're going through a long season of heaviness through manifold temptation. And if the truth were told, you find yourself, you find it difficult to count it all joy when you find yourself falling into dire kinds of temptation. So you can side with Miss Job and know that she was not all wrong. Mm-hmm. There comes a time in your life that you look at your situation and you want God to intervene, but you don't want God to do what God do. You want to be on his advisory board. Yeah. Job was righteous, mm-hmm. faithful, holy, kept his integrity, and God wasn't wrong. God only allowed Satan to touch Job's stuff, to mess with his health, but he could not take his life. And because Job's life was ultimately in God's hand, Satan could not push Job but so far. He could only push Job so much. He could only afflict Job for so long. The same is true for you today. The reason why you are here is because God has declared some things over your life. And Satan can only push you so far. He can only mess with the children of God so much and for so long. He can only afflict you for a season because God has already spoken over your life. And when God speaks, he's not wrong. Miss Joe may not have been all wrong, but when God speaks, he's not wrong. You see, you got to know some stuff. You got to know some stuff. You got to know some stuff about God. You got to know that he'll walk with you and talk with you and tell you that you belong to him. You need to know some stuff about God, that he'll be your buckler and your shield. Your strong tower and the righteous will run unto him and be safe. Yeah, yeah. See, you got to know some other stuff. Yeah. The devil always trying to tell us stuff. And he's always doing stuff to us. Go ahead. But you got to know some other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Great is he that's in me yeah. than he that's in the world. Yeah. Go ahead, Reverend. Go ahead, dog. Come on in now. Come on yeah, in. Miss Zoe went wrong. But he lost his stuff. But it was because he knew some other stuff. <laughs> but can I tell you? Yeah. Miss Job wasn't wrong. Job wasn't wrong. Yeah. 
God is never wrong. But Satan was all wrong. Satan was wrong at Calvary. And the good news is he's still wrong. He's still a liar. He's still the father of liars. He's still doomed to hell and forever. He still cannot inherit eternal life. Uh He was wrong and he's still wrong. But let me tell you, Jesus was right. Uh Because Satan was wrong at Calvary. Uh He caused Judas to betray Jesus. Peter to deny Jesus. The disciples to desert Jesus, the people to reject Jesus, Uh Pilate to sentence Jesus, the Roman soldier to crucify Jesus, the grave to receive Jesus, but he was wrong. He was wrong about Jesus. Uh Jesus said, no man takes my life, but I lay it down for my friends. I got the power if I lay it down to pick it up again. He was wrong for thinking that death could keep him and keep him dead and the grave could hold him and keep him in it. Satan was wrong. And he's the only somebody that's wrong in this situation. Uh He was wrong for thinking that if he killed him, that he would die. Uh But he didn't die. He gave up the ghost. (laughs) And he declared, early, Early. resurrection morning. All power, all power in my hand. Uh-huh. He made an open show of the devil. Yeah. Spoiled principalities. Uh-huh. And declared, I got it. Yeah. You need some more stuff. Yeah. You need to know some stuff about him who is and was and shall always be. Yeah. You need to know some stuff about him who will never fail you. Yeah. You need to know some stuff about him who will be bread yeah. when you're hungry. Yeah. Water, Water when you're thirsty. Yeah. A bridge over troubled waters. A ladder to a high mountain. Anybody here know some stuff about God? I came to him just as I was. Weary, wounded, and sad. And I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. I know some stuff about him. Anybody know some stuff about him? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? If he's been good to you. If he delivers you even in your time of doubt, despair, distraughtness, and distrust, then say yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Ain't he all right? He's all right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Doc. Take it. I know some stuff about him. He lives, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. He lives, and because he lives, my living is not in vain. He died, but in in order to get even with his enemy, Cook, he refused to stay dead. Is he alive? Does he walk with you? I come to the air garden early in the morning. While the roses, while the dew is still on the roses, and there, there, He talks to me. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And no matter what you see me going through, I ain't all wrong. I might not be all right, but I ain't all wrong because I know Jesus for myself. And if you don't know him and you're in this room, then you need to get to know him. You can't get to know him on your mama's merit. You might can be on your mama's insurance. You might can be on your mama's bank account. You might can be on your mama's heart. You can might be in your mama's house. But you can't go to heaven on your mama. You got to know him for yourself. The doors of the church open. Is that one that we're trusting today? No matter how wrong you've been, you can get right. You can come as a candidate for baptism by water. You can come on your Christian experience. You can come by letter. You can come to rededicate yourself. Whosoever will, let them come.